Today on the Musky Daily, students participate in the annual wellness fair. Students race across the campus pond in the fourth annual boat regatta. And all of campus witnessed a stunning display of fireworks. All that and more coming up. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Musky Daily. I'm Bryce Lillibridge. And I'm Chris Morgan. With Muskingum University's 20th president, Dr. Ann C. Steele, getting set to end her tenure, the school is planning to put some things together to honor her. One of those honors came down from the Board of Trustees weekend, from the Board of Trustees this weekend, with the Recreation Center being renamed after Steele. From now on, the building that ho houses the Muskie Athletic Department will be known as the Ann C. Steele Center. The announcement came at a dinner during Board of Trustees weekend on Saturday, April 15th. A new Concord man led police on an on-foot chase after fleeing the scene of a crash early Monday evening. Troopers say Brian Kessner reportedly drove his Ford Explorer through a fence, striking a utility pole while traveling northbound on Rex Mills Road. Police were searching Kessner's residence when neighbors alerted them that he was running along Main Street. After a brief foot pursuit, Kessner gave up without incident near Fuelmar at the intersection of Main Street and Friendship Drive. Troopers say Kessner appeared to be heavily intoxicated, saying he didn't remember leaving the scene. Kessner also told police another person was driving the vehicle, but no other driver has been identified. Kessner was transported to Genesis Hospital in Zanesville for his injuries. He's been cited for failure to control a motor vehicle, fleeing the scene of an injury crash, and operating a vehicle under the influence. Muskingum University's student senate elections for the 2016-2017 school year didn't go as planned. Only 11 spots were filled of the 40, which caused the other elections to be canceled. The positions that were filled were transfer student representative, academic representative, gender and sexual minority representative, commuter student representative, honorary representative, class of 2017 president, all class of 2018 officers, and class of 2019 president. Right now, there is no current plan to attempt to get more students to get involved in elections. On April 12th, students attended the 10th Annual Wellness Fair in the Rec Center Atrium. Marty Kurtz reports. 221 students filled the Recreation Center Atrium for the 10th Annual Wellness Fair to learn how to improve their health. The Wellness Fair takes place every April and is hosted by the Wellness Center in order to give students a chance to learn about the local health services offered. In the atrium, there are 17 tables with different services that provide information for the students. Organizations are selected based on their primary specialty service and how it affects Muskingum University's Hello. campus community. Health educator at the Muskingum County Safe Communities Coalition, Cesley Hayes, says they're excited to be at the Wellness Fair and bringing awareness to traffic safety like distracted and impaired driving. It's a great target audience because they are young drivers. We really need them to be aware of um, different statistics and things. We don't want them to become a statistic. So that's why we're here to promote those kind of initiatives. Director of the Wellness Center, Susan Bracker, says that she wants students to understand that relevant wellness information can benefit their life here at Muskingum. Students who came to the event were able to partake in a bingo-style game in which they were able to win prizes. For Orbit Media News, I'm Marty Kurtz. We're going to take a short break, but make sure to stay tuned. When we come back, we'll have a story about a student who found his match. We have the music. We have the cameras. We have the talent. Orbit Media, where the magic happens. On the story. On the quad. On the scene. This is the Muskie Daily. Welcome back to the Muskie Daily. Joining us today on the show is Muskingum University junior Chase Myers, here to talk about registering for the bone marrow registry later on this week. Chase, first of all, thanks for joining us on the show. Of course. So you donated bone marrow last year in October. What was the whole process like for you? Tell us your story about that. Well, last uh, spring semester last year, I got into the registry here on campus uh, through a similar drive to what we're doing right now. Um, they contacted me in July and told me that I had matched someone preliminarily 
And so once you get that pre preliminary match, then you go through a lot of testing. I'm a lot of blood work. And so I went up to Newark and had some blood work done, went up to the James Center in Columbus and had some more blood work done. The final results came in and I was a perfect match for uh, the gentleman that I donated to. And I had showed all the right numbers, and all the right signs that I was healthy and ready to proceed through the process. So that sounds like a pretty lengthy process of going through all of that. It was. Um, mine went, like I said, from July, and then I finally donated in October. Um, I don't know what the average time is, but I do know that my process was actually expedited because uh, the patient that I donated to was on an urgent list. And so usually that process takes a little bit longer. Um, and it's not that there's any more tests I do. It's just there's more time in between all of those tests. And what kind of effects did that testing have on your body with getting poked with all those needles and all the blood work? Um, there was nothing too terrible. Uh, I am terrible at giving blood. I always pass out. And so we had a lot of fun in, in the labs um, watching me go pale. And But there was no real true effects out of that. Once you get into the injections of the Neupogen, you experience some achiness. Uh, a lot of people describe it as falling on ice or if you've slipped and fell before. Just an overall, um, your joints are achy, you can get tired just because your body is in such overactivity and all of your joints are built up with these cells and so usually your joints are able to move fluently uh, when you put all of those extra cells there they have a little bit more trouble. And have you heard from the gentleman that you donated to? I have. Um, due to HIPAA laws that we can have very little communication and there can be no real details but in December he sent me a letter and went through the um, donation registry and it was sent to me um, and it was just a letter from him thanking me for what I had done. Um, I found out that he has a family. He has three kids and a wife. Um, and so that was really exciting. So once again this year, through uh, Phi Mu Alpha Symphonia and Alpha Sigma Alpha, the registry is coming back again this year. How can students get involved with that this time around? Uh, it's very simple to do. Just go over to the rec center uh, Tuesday through Thursday between 10 and 2 and come see us. There are going to be people there uh, from one of the two organizations at all times. And you just go in, you fill out some papers, give us some information about yourself, a uh, phone number, your address, how we can get a hold of you, stuff like that. You have to fill out a short health history form, um, just telling us so we know generally what uh, health you're in. We're looking for people between the ages of 18 and 44 that are in um, healthy condition. It's just that if you're healthy and if you're younger, there is a better chance of the donation working and the transplant working, and it's a quicker recovery time for yourself because you're in um, good health. Well, thanks for joining us on the show once again today, Chase. Absolutely. We'll be right back after a short break here on the Muskie Daily. Stay updated on decisions being made on campus by tuning into Student Senate here on Orbit TV. Student Senate meetings air every Tuesday at 11 in the evening and Wednesdays through Sundays at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. A team led with experience, reporters forged from ethics, and a crew dedicated to bringing the knowledge this is the Muskie Daily, the number one rated college television broadcasters in New Concord. Looking at the weather that's heading into New Concord, tonight will be mostly cloudy with a low of 43. Tomorrow we'll see mostly sunny skies with a high of 76. And finally, tomorrow night, will bring slight chance of showers with a low of 54. Now here's a look at your extended forecast. Daily. The, the Muskingum women's bowling team took home a fourth place finish in the cl club collegiate national tournament. The tournament was set up with the all Baker game format. 
So there are five bowlers on a team, and each player was responsible for two out of the ten frames per game. The Muskies competed with a bare minimum of five bowlers. Sophomore fin Summer Finley scored well enough to be ranked in the top 25 bowlers for club teams and is a finalist in for the All-American candidate. The women are now ranked 13th in the country. Both men's and women's track and field team went to Ohio Wesleyan to compete in the All-Ohio Championships. Neither side won the event, but, ba but Blake Wielder and Dan, Dan McGoggin, uh, McGoggin received honorable mentions for, for their performances, with Wilder coming in second in the high jump and McCoggin placing third in the long jump. They will next go to the Wilmington Invitational this Friday. The baseball team split a crucial doubleheader outing against the Ohio Northern Polar Bears last Saturday. In game one, the Muskies pulled away early and never looked back, taking the four, tacking on four runs at the bottom of the fourth, winning the uh, eight to two. In game two, the Muskies tried to get started early again behind Dallas Allen's leadoff home run but the Polar Bears slowly took away the lead and then sealed it by scoring six runs in the final inning, losing 11-3. Loss puts them at fifth place in, with the Capital Crusaders holding the series advantage just outside of the OAC tournament. They next play today against Wittenberg. That's all for sports. Up next, stop. Hammer time. Stu students relive stre relieve stress on the quad. Stay updated on decisions being made on campus by tuning in to Student Senate here on Orbit TV. Student Senate meetings air every Tuesday at 11 in the evening and Wednesdays through Sundays at 10 in the morning and 6 and 11 in the evening. A team led with experience, reporters forged from ethics, and a crew dedicated to bringing the knowledge. This is the Muskie Daily, the number one rated college television broadcasters in New Concord. One campus group used end of the semester stress as a recruitment tactic. The Association for Computing Machinery held a text match on the quad, giving students a chance to relieve stress in hopes of gaining members. ACM President Patrick Mullen headed the event. We organized the event, went behind dumpsters the last couple of weeks, went to flea markets, got funding, and we got everything here today. Student and competitive weightlifter Garrett Grayling decided to give it a swing. I felt pretty good. It felt good to uh, relieve some stress. Finals are coming up, so I feel like I'm ready to ace them now. Muskingum University's annual boat regatta took place on Saturday, April 16th. The competition was won by partners Cody Dent and Lexi Ricker with their boat, Jabari 1230. According to the duo, the name of the boat is in honor of a friend of theirs who helped them and the amount of the duct tape they used to create it. Basically, we started with uh, oh, a very large oh, okay. refrigerator box and about four six foot tubes and carpet rolls. And those are all encased in the uh, bottom section there. And then about like, double, double, tripled everything in duct tape. The name of it is Jabari 1230. <laughs> the team said that their success in the race was due to the type of box they used. The Skingham University's World Vision hosted their first ever fireworks festival over the weekend. Fireworks were set off on Saturday night between the baseball field and McCall Lane. Students and residents of New Concord gathered on the tennis courts where free blankets were handed out by World Vision to the first 30 people to arrive. World Vision also provided free snacks and drinks. President of World Vision, Rasuki Hosoi, said that hopefully the fireworks festival will continue to occur as in the future as an annual event. Muskie Palooza is coming up this weekend. There will be a rock climbing wall, mechanical football, and other activities on the East Lawn. And that's all we have for the Muskie Daily today. Be sure to tune in to WMCO 90.7.